couple of random things today. I've got this uh, little power adapter brick from work that died this week. It is a 100 to 240 volt input, um, 12 volt point three amp output. Just a common little thing. Already replaced it with something else, but it failed. So I'm going to tear it down, see if I can either fix it or just tear it down for fun. And because I'm just having fun, oh, come on, be like that. This works, I know it does. Fine, I'll use the old standby. There, that's better. Okay. You know, the all important opening is done. And before I get into that, uh, got this in the mail today from unixstickers.com. It is, as you might expect, stickers. Um, just geeky stickers for putting on your laptop or whatever. But they've got a promotion going on that I noticed from somewhere and pointed out on Reddit or whatever for a buck for just a demo pack, a sample pack. So why the hell not? Um, where is it? That makes it worthwhile right there. I got me a tuck sticker to put someplace. Let's park him over there for now. Uh, what other open source? Bash, Arch Linux, Debian, close enough to uh, Ubuntu. Linux inside, probably use that one. Git, I don't actually use Git, I use Bash Shell. Um, oh, just some smaller ones, Python, Git, Arch, and Vim, larger Vim. Who are you? Oh, yeah, uh, it's uh, Golang. It's uh, uh, another programming language that I've never played with. And good old Python. Which way up does it go? That way. So, yeah, for a buck, why not? Not sponsored or anything. I actually spent my own dollar on these. All right, now for the main event. This power supply, it, well, let's... There is an LED that's supposed to light up on that side of it. As you can see, it doesn't. And more importantly, ain't no 12 volts. So that might be part of it. Might have, uh, you can see that. And there's some tape goo on there. I peeled that tape off earlier. But, obviously, the first thing to do is to get into it. And I think there is, yeah, there's a screw hidden under there. And there's probably a couple of screws hidden under these little rubber foots here. There usually is. Oh, yeah, there we go. Mr. Phillips. And this one. Now then, is that going to be big enough to do it? Oh, it is. Okay. That's cool. Wasn't sure. So, well, that was easy. Okay. As expected, standard switch mode power supply. And step one, as always, check the fuse. Are those caps soldered on? Of course they are. Fuse, fuse, fuse. Are you still functioning? Yes, okay. That's a start. Now these caps are especially bulgy. So what's going on? Oh, nice little shield on the back there just to keep the noise in. So where is that LED? Hmm. I think I'm going to have to take that shield off. So I think it's going to be in my way. You may notice that I've switched to a slightly bigger tip of my soldering iron than I normally have on it. Just to try and get a little bit more heat into there quickly. Oh, I broke that one off. Okay, whatever. So that came from that little blob there. I'll have to remember that for later. 
Oh, what do we got here? The LED is those two pins there, and the output is over here. Diode. Where else is it coming from? Hmm. So what has failed in this? Okay, so there's the bridge rectifier. Those four pins there. Um, so I'm guessing... Well, let's just take a peek. Look, see here. That's the earth pin. The center of that guy. There's the two AC inputs. One side goes over to this capacitor. Then that one... Um, and through the fuse, and, and there's some traces that I just can't see in there because they're, yeah, a, a double-sided board that's this crowded is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, but, you know, some capacitors across the line there. We've got the fuse, and this guy's labeled R1, so that's going to be one of those uh, negative temperature coefficient resistors, but that's in series with the fuse. This big ass capacitor here, 250 volts, 40 slash 100 slash 21. Oh, wait there, 0.33 microfarads. Okay, 275 volts times two. Oh, is there two capacitors in that? No. Probably just... Oh, duh. Not times two. It's an X2 class capacitor. Dummy. And then a couple of resistors across it. So that's in series to the fuse. Let's be a little bit dangerous here. Uh, measure the voltages across that bridge rectifier there. Don't try this at home, kids. So I'm going to you know, unplug the other end of the power cord before I hook this one up. Okay. Nothing too close. Then I'll plug this end in. Didn't blow up in my face. That's cool. Uh, it's voltage. So there should be 125 volts across there and there. 122, close enough. Um, and the bridge. Where's the AC and where's the DC? For higher voltage, I probably shouldn't be using these leads anyways. I, I'm, I'm not too scared of them, but I know somebody's going to say, those aren't Cat 3 rated or Cat 4 rated or Cat anything rated, which is true, they're just cheap trinesium. But, fine, I will bring out the big guns here. So, I can't, I can't get a good picture of it for you in the lighting. But that bridge rectifier is a KBP2056. And the two middle pins are in fact the AC. And, and the positive is on this end of it here, this one. And the negative is on that end of it there. So let's uh, try this again. Okay, we're alive again. So the two middle pins are the AC. Oh, and we do have AC there. So let's go to DC now and measure the two outside pins. 164 volts DC. Okay. So that's working. So from there, that DC is going to be... Where's the switch mode? Probably that little transistor surrounded by these diodes here. I don't see any little chip, so this is just going to be... Oh no, there is... Oh, that's a 6-pin chip down there. 
this guy here is the optocoupler or opto isolator um, and there's your break between the high voltage side and the low voltage side a nice big one too um, hmm So there is, oh, where's, the, where's this transformer here? There it is there. So where is its primary going to be? I don't know how much I can see here. Primary is going to be those two there. So you got 18 volts AC. Can I do hertz on this thing? I can do. Hmm. Let's see how it's chopping it up here. Fifteen kilohertz, fifteen and a half kilohertz at eighteen VAC, and then on the secondary side. Two point eight VAC, but only nine kilohertz. How the f hmm. Anyway, so we've 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 got it going through there. That's cool. Um, so what's next? Yeah. So we are we are generating creating it into DC we are generating AC to pump back through the transformer um, the transformer is dropping the voltage down so let's disconnect the power cable here or the output cable who knows maybe it's shorter so those two capacitors are filtering capacitors obviously let's see if there's any voltage across them Uh, DC volts. So where are my two capacitors? There's one of them. And it's got 12 volts across it. That's the bigger filter. Where's the smaller one here? Okay. So the two filtering capacitors have voltage across them. And now I got 12 volts on my output. Huh. So maybe it was this cable's just fucked up. That would be an easy fix. So obviously that's no good. Drop it back past the tape goo. Yeah, I don't know who did that, but I'm not, not happy with you, whoever you are. Okay, now I'm not going to be able to get that through there, am I? Uh, or something I can... Okay, it was a bit of a fight, but I won. I got it jammed through there. I had to actually ream this thing out with a drill bit. So now I can put her, start putting her back together, hopefully. Important to stay hydrated when you're working hard. Let's clear those holes out. So get the wires through. This would be easier if this thing was nice and flat and square on the other side. Okay, two holes for wire shoving. Okay. I've got the leads tinned at least a little bit so I can poke them through the holes. That's mean go through there, ground into there. And it should just be a matter of gobbing some solder on there. But because it's a heavy wire and big pads, it's going to take a lot of heat, a lot more than I'm normally comfortable putting on a board. Okay. 
You can see how it's just bowing up there because there's not enough heat. Eventually it comes through. I think that's got it. Focus, damn it. Oh, that looks reasonable. Use my flush cutters to knock those off. But before I get all cocky and button it up, let's see if she works. Zoom out. No explosions, that's a good start. No LED, that's not a good sign. Uh, turn the meter back on, let's see what we got here. Fuck all. What the hell? Okay, so there we go. We've got LED, we've got 12 volts. But for some reason, this thing's not happy. Oh yeah, there is in fact a short across the cable. Aha! Uh -huh. There's your problem. Hmm. What to do about that? Always check the simplest thing first. So, fortunately, I've got some of these here. Getting warm on the fingers. Okay. How's that look? Reasonable. Now then, let's see. Are we shorted? Open circuit. That's what we want. Right. Okay. That's a little suspect. Not proud. Not thrilled with that. Okay. But let's see if it explodes. We got a light, that's a good start. Where's the other end of this thing? Center positive, right? Eek, let's put it on volts. DC. There we go. Good. Now just close this up and blob, blob, blob. Kidoki and screws, and we be done. Had I followed the cardinal rules of troubleshooting right off the top, that being do the easiest thing first, this would have been a lot quicker. So be it. Still got to poke around inside there, and it looks like a pretty reasonable power supply actually. It handled having a short circuit on its output without dying. So that's all good. That's a good sign actually. Okay, so, oh, rubber feet. One rubber feet. Two rubber feet. So the short was probably always in that end there. I didn't really have to knock the other end off, but there was that frayed crap. I, you don't like to see that. Okay, so plug it in. Is it gonna work? That's a 
There you go, yeah. I can never find where the other end of this wire went. Oh, I didn't do that. Let's unplug that. So, I'm just going to squeeze that down, kind of crimp that in a little bit for some strain relief. And screw this end on. That's not as strain reliefy as I would like. I might drop some heat shrink over that later just to hold it a little bit better, but I'm not worried about that right now. Just do this and this. And this. There we go. All right. Done. Fairly straightforward repair. Yeah, this is, that wasn't, that wasn't bad. That was kind of a fun evening in the shop. Don't need the soldering anymore. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you uh, watching over my shoulder while I'm dicking around in the shop. That's, that's all, always uh, what's happening around this place. And got a little bit of a bonus mailbag tonight. That's always cool. Talk to you later. Thanks.